Hi everyone, Frankie in here, and for my first video, I'm going to start out with something nice and simple to make, nice and simple to explain. Um, this is one of my favorite reactions. It's uh, known as thermite. This is the reaction between iron oxide, bond between two iron atoms and three oxygen, and aluminum metal. The reaction is extremely exothermic. It is hot enough to melt steel. Um, the reason for that is that um, an iron and oxygen bond is very, very strong. There's a lot of energy in that bond. And when you break that bond, that bond energy is all converted to heat energy. And then that's transferred to your products. The products are um, molten iron and molten alu aluminum oxide, both of which melt below the um, temperature at which this reaction occurs. Now, according to my calculations here, uh, the maximum temperature this reaction could possibly reach is 3,767 degrees Celsius, but this calculation was made without factoring in the amount of energy it takes to melt aluminum oxide. It's very, very difficult to measure the amount of energy aluminum it takes for aluminum oxide to melt since we're dealing with extremely high temperatures. Uh, Wikipedia says that this reaction will reach around the temperature of 2,500 degrees Celsius. So, any it could it could be anywhere between these two values. Um, so that will be hot enough to melt just about any metal except tungsten, or very high melting point alloys. So let's actually make the stuff now. So according to the to my calculations here. For every one gram of aluminum, you're going to need three grams of iron oxide. So, for example, if you want to make 12, gra 12 grams of thermite, you'll need three grams of aluminum and nine grams of iron oxide. So, let's make some here. Let's get aluminum. Here's aluminum powder. Again, this is the same stuff you'll find in your... Um, in the foil you use to wrap your food, except it's in powdered form so that the reaction can proceed at a fast enough rate to self-sustain. So we've got 13.6 grams of aluminum. Let's multiply that by 3. 13.6 times 3. Okay, we're going to need 40.8 grams of iron oxide. So, so in total, our mixture will weigh 54.4 grams. So let's add the iron oxide. Now this stuff is just is just common rust. You'll find it you'll find it on the side of buildings, on on your pipes, on anything that contains iron. Iron reacts very readily with oxygen. Now the bond between aluminum and, and oxygen is more stable than the bond between iron and um, iron and oxygen. So so aluminum is capable of ripping the oxygen away from this iron and releasing huge amounts of that energy, which is stored in the iron-oxygen bond. Okay. A little more. Okay, close enough. So you want to mix this stuff really, really well because in order for two substances to react, they have to actually physically collide. So for example, if I don't mix this very well and if all the aluminum's at the bottom, all the iron oxide's at the top, then only, only the parts of the, of the two substances that are actually touching will react and we won't really get our desired um, pool of molten aluminum oxide and iron. Okay. Alright, so it's mixed pretty well now, so I'm going to put this all in a soda can. Um, this mixture has a very, very high activation energy. It takes a lot of energy to rip oxygen atoms away from iron, so the ignition temperature is very high and you make sure that the that the molten slag the molten slag of course is going to travel downward due to gravity and it'll ignite the rest of our mixture 
as I have had issues um, igniting the entire mixture, just dumping out, dumping it out in the form of a pile. Now, do this very high activation energy. You're going to need magnesium strips to um, ignite this mixture. So, without further ado, let's melt through this old uh, this old piece of cookware here to the backyard. Hopefully that hot strip will drop into the thermite before the oxygen runs out. Come on. There we go. As you can see, the reaction is really, really hot. It's uh, several thousand degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and we've got this molten bit of um, molten bit of slag right here. And let me find something I can move it around with. Okay. Oh, this stuff is really really hot so you're going to need a stick you're going to need something to something to move it around with as you can see there is a gaping hole in this uh, in this metal piece of cookware here and some of the slag has dripped through the bottom now this thermite is okay so here's our result after igniting the thermite as you can see the slag went right through the pan right through it <laughs> And I believe this pan is made of aluminum, which melts at temperatures in excess of, if I remember correctly, 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit. So, this is a very, very, very exothermic reaction uh, that we're dealing with.